It's going to change. I'm telling you. Mark my words. What's today? Take this note down. So four years when I'm back on your podcast, <laughs> they'll say, dude, everything you said took place. And what realtors are going to survive? The ones that adapt and the ones that realize relationships cannot be replaced with artificial intelligence. And if it does, it's going to be 10 years from now. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Uh, here I am, Ricky Carruth. I've got my guy, Juan Carlos. And today we're chatting with my brother from another mother and the founder of Lightspeed, the real Brad Lee. Brad, first off, bro, how are you doing, man? Dude, if I was any better, I'd be twins. <laughs> Everything's rocking. Things are that's, popping. That's good, man. Business that's good. Booming. Yeah, what's what's new, man? Anything new in your world? Dude, literally every second that goes by, something new is happening. I just can't keep up with it all, so I focus on the ones that are most important. I'm, I'm launching a, a new brand called The Real Event Series. I just had a real success event with about 60 people just to kind of test out the theory. Went In person? Out, in person, mm -hmm. which leads to obviously virtual, leads to doing business in other ways. So that's just one of the marketing plans that I have. And it went, it went swimmingly. So it's like 60 people in person and then you sell tickets to 10 virtually as well? No, it was live only. 6,000 a ticket okay. to attend. Got you. Got you. Got you. Cool. And then are you going to travel around and do this or everybody has to come to you in one specific spot? They'll be coming to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part of the frame. It's part of the framing. Yeah. Yeah. They come, so what they come to me, sir. So, so what do you get for $6,000? You get tactical blueprints on how to blow up your business, your personal brand, your marketing, and technically your life. It's, it's sales, business, and life, basically. Brad, who do you find yourself working with mostly nowadays? Is it people in uh, entrepreneurship, real estate, finance? It's running the gamut. I've got a bunch of realtors, a bunch of insurance companies, a bunch of MLM companies, a bunch of franchise restaurants, a bunch of car dealerships, a bunch of hotels. And then on the monetization side, it is subject matter experts, authors, speakers, coaches, training companies. Really cool stuff. Awesome. So, so Brad, let's take this back. The first time I ever saw you speak on stage was February 22nd of 2018. I literally have the notes. Wow. And uh, me and Rick, you're back here from, uh, from the real estate agent industry. But something you said on stage that they really caught my eye that uh, I still see you practicing today. And it was called number two to the success formula, be real, right? And I'm going to quote exactly what you said. You said, when you are yourself, you will attract the right people towards you. When you are full of shit, you will attract the wrong people towards you. Be authentic. How has that helped you build your brand over the last three years? Well, fortunately, because the authentic me is <clears throat> charismatic and full of good information. Otherwise, being me might have cost me. So when I say be you, what I really mean is stop trying to figure out what everybody wants and start figuring out what you want. And ultimately, when you figure out what you want, you'll start to sing that song in a way that sounds amazing to anybody in the world that resonates with it. Like, for example, a country singer sometimes sounds great singing country, but they wouldn't sing rap what worth a shit. If someone's into rap and they're like, I'm being myself. Well, you might never get anywhere successfully, uh, financially at least, with that authenticity. However, if you switch to country music that may not be your, your most ideal medium and everybody loves it, well, then guess what? That's an authenticity still that's working. Little Nas X, man. Little Nas X, man, went from rapper to country and just completely blew up. One song. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, that's called multi-talented. But, yeah, but, 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 back, but back when I said that, you know, what I really meant was be yourself. Too many people are trying to be somebody else because they think that's what everybody wants. And I would just I would just say that being myself has helped me realize that you're never going to make everybody happy. So you might as well work on yourself. And once you work on yourself and you start to become authentic, people start coming out of the woodwork. I'm getting calls to do keynote speeches. I'm getting calls to freaking, I mean, it's just like, it's helped me grow more importantly, but it's really helped me establish a brand that people can trust. Now you've created a really good brand. <laughs> I love your yeah. social. 
Well, thank you. So, so like, for example, the, the real success event, there were 2000, 4,000 and $6,000 seats, right? Only 60 slots. How mm -hmm. many people out of those 60, would you think bought a VIP? I'd say 10%. That'd be like the normal Pareto distribution model, right? But in reality, 51% bought a VIP ticket. Guess who I said was speaking for the three days? Would you have? Me. I said, I'm going to invite a couple of friends. That's all I said. So what that tells me is not that, oh, everybody loves what Brad Lee has to say. They think I trust this guy because of that authenticity. Because I, I say what I believe, whether you agree or not, and it's not because I'm a dick trying to offend people. It's because I value my opinion as much as I do others. And when I firmly believe something and start talking about it, regardless of, of, of people not liking what I'm saying, I think that's like real authenticity. People just need to know themselves better. I love yeah. it. I love it. And, and now how can we apply this to the real estate industry? What, what are your thoughts overall for real estate agents in the future of how they're doing business? Well, in my opinion, the real estate industry is definitely going through a massive transformation. I think it's going to be digitized greatly. And I think realtors need to figure out how to be unique and authentic to remain in the game. Like, for example, I can buy a house from Zillow, but I can't build a relationship with Zillow. I'm not going to have a beer with Zillow. I'm not going to go fishing with Zillow. Zillow is not going to send my kid a birthday or attend my christening or whatever relationship elements are there. Zillow is not going to be able to provide that. So if I were a realtor, I would start focusing on building relationships yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's really all we focus on when we're training our agents is relationships over transactions. But when you say digitize and, and you can buy a house from Zillow, you're still buying from a human. I mean, you may find the house on Zillow and then you're still actually working with a human being on the other side. Not, not for long. AI is going to come in like you wouldn't believe. You'll be buying stuff from who you think is a human and it's complete. AI technology. Zillow is going to have end-to-end -end services where you can find it, click it, buy it, own it, sign it, dot it, all virtually, not talking to one human being, no negotiation, bing, 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 bing. So you think your regular everyday people that maybe even never bought a house, they're going to feel comfortable doing it that way? Like having a robot basically handle the process for them? Well, again, if, if you want the truth, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's why relationships are important. You know, I could sit here and be like, oh, no, don't worry, everybody. Yeah. People yeah. will still be necessary. No, they right. won't. You will not be necessary very <laughs> soon. So how, how does the agent compete with the robot? Do they, aside from the relationship, do they offer a different experience? Do they offer several services that Zillow can offer? What would you do if you were a real estate agent and you wanted to just dominate against Zillow in your market? Be well known and make a lot of friends, period. That's the differentiator. Friendship, relationship. I don't have a relationship with Google, but I still use it because it's very, very helpful. I'm not going to call my friend and say, hey, what is, uh, what's the population of Virginia? I'm going to go to Google. Why? Because there's nobody I know that knows everything. So in certain cases, you're going to have to realize Zillow will probably know the best house and the best location. It's going to have comps better than any of the realtors are going to have. Where are they getting their comps in the first place from the MLS? Well, house around you sold for about this much. Zillow knows that shit. So all of the things that they used to come to us for, which is information, you know, where are these houses? Hey, can you take me to look at them? Now I can do virtual walkthroughs. There's people buying houses sight unseen. It's going to change. I'm telling you, mark my words. What's today? Take this note down. So four years when I'm back on your podcast, <laughs> you'll say, dude, everything you said took place. And what realtors are going to survive? The ones that adapt and the ones that realize relationships cannot be replaced with artificial intelligence. And if it does, it's going to be 10 years from now. Right now, relationships cannot be replaced. Okay. No, I agree robot, with everything robots. you're saying. I think it's going to change a lot. Robot uh, and, can be replaced. So if I call you and you're a robot realtor and I could, I could go through Zillow and get the same damn shit with less headache, I'm using Zillow. And I think a whole lot of other people will too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I think, I think to a certain extent, yeah, it's going to change a lot. And I think the technology that the AI and everything is actually going to make the real estate agents who can build relationships and build their business lives easier 
It's going to yeah. automate a lot of the process for them. Yeah, because like right now, I got a buddy named David, family friend for a long time. He's a realtor. When I'm looking for a house, I don't, I don't go to Zillow and look. I say, David, here's what I'm looking for. And he runs around and does whatever realtors do and brings me back six houses to look at. Now, why didn't I go to Zillow? Because you've got Dave. Because I got a friend in the business, mm -hmm. man. Because mm -hmm. I trust Dave. Dave can look at Zillow if he wants to. I don't give a shit how he gets me my info, but I'm going to Dave because Dave's my buddy. Right. If Dave wasn't my buddy, I'd go to Zillow. Or I'd, I'd hire somebody to go to Zillow. Now, does that make sense? So my, my clients, most of my clients, they actually find all the, all the properties they want to see on Zillow. Like they go there first and they, they come to me and say, here's what we want to see, Ricky. Wow. Like, yeah. Yeah. They, they find everything on Zillow. Like it made my life a lot easier. All right. Because, well, that backs up my theory, bro. You're already starting to get replaced. They don't even No, I'm not getting replaced. It made my life easier. It took out half of my job of finding the properties. Now we could, they already know exactly what they want to see. Now they need someone to show them the properties and negotiate the deal and work through the financing, the inspection, the title work, uh, all that good stuff to get to the closing. Make sure that they're getting a good deal. Make sure that the, the closing costs, they aren't getting ripped off, so on and so forth. Before there was Zillow, would, how, would, how would the normal person find Well, they it? would have to come to me and I would send them a list. They would filter through the okay, list. Now, we would go back and forth. And now they don't, correct? Right. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. You guys are slowly becoming irrelevant. It's hard to hear when you are one, but we can do positive thinking and, and come up with all the positive. Well, you're not saying that we're going to become irrelevant. You're saying the people that can create relationships and there's going to be agents that do survive this. Bingo. Right, right there. Right. Right there. And, that, and I thought that's what, where you were going with the question. It's like, <laughs> hey, what do you think that's going to happen with real estate? Well, here's what I think is going to happen. Digitization is going to take over. AI is mm -hmm. going to take over the bulk of it, except for people that have relationships. So if I were a realtor, I'd be really, you know, focused on building powerful relationships because those like Ricky, if you were, if you were my dude, they could say, look, you can go to Zillow, click the button. You don't even need Ricky anymore. Well, I, I might, I might uh, click the button. If you know, you click in the button, my payments, 9,000. But if I go through Zillow, it's 4,000. Then it's like, you, if you're my buddy, you understand. But I wouldn't do that. If you're my buddy, I'd say, bro, you charging me $9,000 to get this house. I can get it for four over here. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, what will what, happen? It, what, I, this is what I think is going to happen. I think that commissions will get squeezed down. And I think that our lives will actually be easier because the digitization and the, and the, the AI is going to like it knocked out me looking for properties for most people. Right. So it made my life easier. I can actually close more deals. Right. I'm actually closing more deals because of Zillow. Whatever the next automation part that slips into the industry is just going to make my life even easier. If commissions come down, I feel like I'm still going to be able to close more deals because I'm doing less work. Right. And I'm able to help more people. But I'm one of these guys that when the market does shift, I'm going to be one of these relationship guys that built a brand that's still going to be around. That's going to make the adaptions. It's going to be willing to come down on commissions for more volume, for less work because of automation, you know? Hey, by the way, I want to talk to you guys offline about a new software that I've discovered that just made Discovered or created? Discovered. <laughs> it makes getting insurance amazingly easy uh -huh. it, doesn't, it doesn't cost realtors any like right now how 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 can getting insurance be a pain in the butt a little bit yeah you know i mean you just pay it anyway. i mean i got blue i got blue cross blue cross i just pay it every month yeah just again so so, so, so brad a question do, do you see uh insurance agents and real estate agents as interchangeable where insurance agents are going to go out of business too or what do you see happening there? Well, it's already happening with insurance agents, but you know, fortunately, because of the way the insurance model works, you know, you get it from a from an agent regardless of how you got it. You know, but that's not real estate. You can be a realtor; it doesn't mean anyone has to use you. But but with insurance, if I go to if I go to State Farm, they say, "There's Ricky, my State Farm agent," and I go, "Hey, Ricky, I need I need insurance," and you go, "Bing," and then you get paid for it, right? Like my, right. my, I use American family for my personal stuff. 
And I've never, I've never met the office, but I like the dude. His name's Jeff Catino. And the reason why I like the dude is because he sends out little things and emails and reminders and, and, and like, he's a convenient dude. Now I don't say I have Jeff Catino American family. When someone says what, what insurance you got, what do I say? Whatever the company is. Yeah, I got American family. So, so I don't know where I'm going with that, but I think insurance is already going that way. Like right now, dude, you can get e quotes and like you do you do you talk to an insurance agent to get insurance? Mm. Not anymore, no. <laughs> okay, before you had to. Yeah. Now you don't, and I, and I think real estate's going to go that way. But I think insurance is already a lot farther ahead. But so, how are all these agents making money? Because you can still make great money in in the in the financial industry. Um, in fact, it's it's one of the I think it's the top producer of millionaires. And so if, if you don't need, how does that work? Well, you have to own the agency. You have to own the, 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 the rights or be yeah. an insurer. Like right, these insurance right. companies, how much money they make. Yeah. Now I think the insurance, yeah, yes. company, I, I think insurance, the insurance business is way farther ahead because it's uh, it's way more likely. I mean, there's, way i mean it's way easier to just click boom boom this is a house we're talking about i think the agents that like even as a new agent 10 years from now a new agent 10 years from now any agent can come into the market and just call property owners and create friendships with property owners right and like the market's going to dictate what the commission is you know i mean you may get paid less in 10 years but nevertheless if you want to be a new agent in 10 years it doesn't matter if zillow's out there if buyers can buy a house on zillow if you have the seller right if you have the seller then they have to come to you. They have to go through you. You've got the exclusive right to sell this property. So I, I'm, I, I see your point and I, I respect your point. And I think there's a lot of truth to your point. And I think that there will always be room for new agents to come into the market that understand how this business is actually done. I agree. Again, I don't think we're disagreeing at all. At all. No, I don't. Because I don't think realtors are going out of business. Just like I'd be stupid. But- Look at the car business. I remember when someone said, nobody's going to buy a car online. Uh huh. Yeah. There's a lot of people buying cars online. I remember when they said, uh, a vending machine for used cars will never work. It's working, <laughs> it's working phenomenally well. Okay. It's working phenomenally well. Why? Oh, they're always going to need to test drive the car and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Nope. Not true. Go talk to eBay Motors. Go see how many cars they sell with no test drive, no salesperson, no nothing. Connecting the buyers, okay, is all that needs to happen. If I'm selling my house and I can go up to sellyourhouse.com and I and I list it and bam, it sells the, the, the day I list it, you know, that's coming. So, so and, and, and we agree on that. But I think what you think I'm disagreeing and I'm not is there'll still be a great opportunity in real estate. Oh yeah. For people that understand that like you got to freaking build relationships. You got to be unique somehow. You have to be almost service oriented because all of those big tech plays, they're not going to replace real relationship. They, they just can't. It's, it's meant for high volume, low service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, if, if, if I lived in your town and you were my my real real estate guy, I'd be like, you know, hey, I, I need to buy a commercial building. Hey, Ricky, find me a commercial building. That that's not going away, especially for let's say rich people. Yeah. Rich yeah, people that... rich people want you to do shit for them. Yeah. If you want, listen, if you want to get rich, figure out how to make it easy to do something. If you want to get wealthy, figure out how to do it for them. Better write that one down. Twenty twenty one. There we go. I like so so so. Do you think the luxury real estate market with the agents selling four, five, six million dollar homes, that's going to be a little bit more safeguard from these tech companies? You know, I, I I think I think whatever begins to get commoditized first is 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 the problem. So a track home, if it's more of a commodity, then then maybe. But right now, again, these high ticket homes. 
when I look at a house online and they're, it's just gorgeous. Like there's one in Nashville. My wife's looking at Nashville. There's one I forget some famous person owned. It's right on this lot, right on the lake, surrounded by a grove of unbelievably um, like growth, like trees you can't buy or replace. It's got unbelievable uh, workout room. It's got an unbelievable theater, an unbelievable kitchen. It's got an unbelievable gazebo right by the, this kick-ass koi pond. And then it's got an unbelievable pool and, an, um, and the lake right there and an unbelievable freaking yard. Unbelievable. I ain't never been there. So how do I know all that? Because Google Earth, man, I walked around that property. It's unbelievable. But I got a buddy named Good Time Tommy down there in Nashville. Yeah, so we I, know Good Time Tommy. Yeah, so I call my buddy Good Time Tommy. Hey, go over, take a look at this deal here. That, 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 get me back. And then you're right. Hey, go see if they'll take bing, bing, bing. You know, I'm not on Zillow. So so I agree with everything you're saying. And, I, and, I, and I'm pretty sure the, the, the reason you asked the question, and hopefully the reason I'm saying it is to get – people listening to this, which is mainly realtors, mainly to, realtors, yeah. to really think about it. So let me clarify in case all that confused you. Number one, massive opportunity in real estate. Like if you're not, if let's just say commission, because again, I don't coach people to go to real estate. I coach people to invest in real estate. You know, if it's so valuable to sell it, why don't you buy it yourself? Like, you know, well, I can't use all these houses. Well, then you don't understand real estate because yes, you can for cash flow. So I'd turn them from a real tur into a real tur investor myself. But that's beside the point. If I'm brand new and I'm young and I'm getting into real estate, what 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 advice would I want to get to apply to make sure I'm more likely to make it? This one. Build relationships. The more hands you shake, the more money you make. Get everybody in your world to know who you are and what you do and get everybody to trust and like you and you are going to win regardless of technology. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, it, it, that's what I believe. You guys agree or disagree? I no. agree. I'm yeah. with you there. I think, it, I think it's true now. <laughs> I think it's true now. Now, that going back to the commercial thing, you said you'd let what's-his-name know about a commercial building. That's very interesting because Zilla doesn't have commercial, right, Juan? Nope. Purely no, they, 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 commercial is a whole different ball game. There's oh, a completely different platform. There's ML, There's... The disco star, there's, there's, there's loop net. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the way, that, that's another thing I, I might advise. You know, look into commercial. Mm -hmm. Like, if I get, if it takes me three weeks to sell a house, it could take me three weeks to sell a strip mall. Or maybe it takes three weeks to sell a house and I make 10 grand, but I sell a strip mall in nine months and I make 10 million. Well, shit, I might, I might focus on commercial. What do you think is the uh, the outtake for retail and shopping centers and malls being that everything's going digital? Do you see that surviving? Do you see other people coming in and repurposing it? Yeah. Yeah. Like I see class A office space g going away, not completely, but going away. I think co when COVID hit and everybody worked from home, there's a lot of companies going, damn, that's actually better. And then there's, there's, there's employees going, damn, that's actually better. <laughs> and then yeah. everybody's like, damn, why, why are we even need brick and mortar? I was just talking to the CEO of EXP. Glenn Sanford. Yeah. Founder actually. Yeah. Glenn. And so I, I asked him, if you're a young entrepreneur, which a realist, which a realtor is, would you agree? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing I tell them, dude. I should I should start coaching real estate people. Uh -oh. <laughs> but 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 uh, he said you don't need brick and mortar. Okay, well if you don't need brick and mortar, what's going to happen to all those real estate offices? Well, somebody owns them, whether they were rented or not. Now they they're just going to have to go adapt and turn it into something else. Um, you know, uh, uh, children playgrounds, indoor playgrounds, uh, what whatever. I mean, I, I use that as an example because. Like right now, if I wanted to drop my kids off for four hours uh, and, and, and have go run errands, why? Well, because I'm a single dad and, you know, whatever reason. There, there's very few places to do that here in Las Vegas, which is crazy. Why? Well, because it gets 140 degrees outside every day and kids want to play, but you can't let them play outside. They, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. so, so I would turn that real estate office into a playground and then try to adapt. And so... Mm -hmm. 
You know, I went from freaking yeah. getting a tenant that, that rented it to freaking repurposing it as a business. Yeah. Now I we're, think, I think everybody should, should look to be entrepreneurial. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're, we're part of Glenn's company, right? And, uh, Are you, you guys know, we, XP? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. We just, we just interviewed him too, uh, a couple of weeks ago, but a great guy. And, uh, I mean, every time I call, he picks up the phone. I mean, just great Dude, guy. Hey, that says something. Oh yeah. I mean, to be where he is and still answer the phone and everything's amazing. But, um, you know, as far as real estate office is going away, that's another, that's another, you know, little, little debate there. I think that they'll contract really, really hard. Um, but I think there'll still be little, uh, little satellite, like a little, you know, like a uh, little Wi Fi, little internet cafe, internet, you know, agents can come in and kind of use the Wi Fi if they need it, meet a client, have a little conference room. That's what a lot of my agents are doing. Uh, in LA and Dallas, they've got little bitty offices, not these huge offices where people are working there, just like a little, little hub. I've actually got one in Gulf Shores here where people can come in and use the internet, print stuff. There's a conference room if they need to meet a client in person or something like that. I think that's kind of the future of real estate offices, to be honest with you. Out of curiosity, when would I, when would I ever need a place to meet a client? It's very rarely. It's very rarely. But when you need it, you need it. You know, when you need if it, you, you if, need if, it. If you're meeting a seller, you're meeting them at their house. And if you're meeting a buyer, you're probably meeting them at the bank to get them pre-approved. So okay. I tell everyone, you could go out there and be a virtual agent without the office, but it's more of a luxury than it is a necessity. Yeah, but yeah, let me yeah, ask, yeah. It's, it's, it's a luxury. Question. But let me ask you a question. If I'm buying a house from you, Ricky, and I say, hey, man, you're like, hey, we need to meet for whatever reason. Mm. And I say, cool, man, swing by the office. Mm. What would you say? If if you're the agent or if I'm the agent, what do you say? I'm the buyer. I say, hey, swing by my office. Swing by your office as the buyer? Yeah, you're go the, there. You're the agent. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you to come to my office? No, I'm telling you, come to my office. Yeah, I would come to your office. Exactly. So when would right. ever, there ever be a time the realtor needs an office, like needs one? Don't really need one. See, here, here's the thing, though, right? Here's one thing to actually have a brokerage, right? You have to have a physical location by state law, right? Um, no, EXP has not. one broker per state. So they have that office covered for all their agents. That's why the agents can be virtual because there's one fiscal office per state that's owned by EXP corporate. Um, See, yeah. Glenn didn't say that. Glenn said they do not have any brick and mortar offices. They don't. And in, in the traditional sense where agents come in and work by law, you have to have a physical location. That's a commercial you mean office a license somewhere. Right. You have yeah. to have a, you have to have a physical location with an address registered with the state. So they have one of those. So they have actually, they actually have 50 offices. If you look at their offices, you know, you look at Remax, there's like 3,500 offices and if you go there. It could be one of them executive Rent to yeah, yeah, you never go there. Exactly. You, you really don't yeah. even know where it is. I mean, you see the address, but you know, you, you won't be able to find it. You know, kind of deal. Um, Dude, are you guys are you guys crushing it, killing it? How come? Just out of curiosity, how come most realtors aren't? They, they, they. As far as EXP goes, no. As far as the real just sales, just sales. I, I would bet that a high percent I, of it, realtors fail. It, it, it's it's it, it really comes down to one thing, bro: confidence. They don't have confidence in their set. If they, if there's even 1% that they're not confident, like they're, they're 99% sure they can do it. That 1% completely murders them. They just, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it a step further. They don't have the confidence to take the action to lead generate. This entire business is lead generation. It's relationship building. If you go ahead and pull a hundred realtors, there's less than 99 of them at minimum who are calling less than one hour a week. That one, the one that's closing, 10, 15, 20, 30 million dollars a year, they're on the phone three, four hours a day prospecting. So I think it's I think it's action. But the reason that they're not taking the action because they're not confident. Because like of confidence, just, it, yep. it all comes back to confidence. Even when they go meet buyers and sellers, right? That little one percent of a lack of confidence, the sellers or buyers see that, they feel that, and they think, oh no, red flag here. I don't want, I don't know, you know, something's going on here. I'm not comfortable. And um, it all comes for me, like the way I watch watch this thing go down. It all comes down. There's a lot of other factors. Everybody has their own journey. Like some people, once they get like one or two buyers going, they just focus on those two buyers. They don't try to get any more. I mean, two buyers in your pipeline is literally no business. You know, there's a lot of things. Hey, let me ask another question. So 
because again, just for the record, folks, you guys know way more than I do about this industry. I've never been in it. So, so all my comments are just blind opinions. So if anybody's getting ready to quit based on what I said, don't quit because you can make a lot of money in real estate. But someone asked me my opinion, I just give it. Now, with that being said, let me ask you this. When you're in real estate, are you actually selling? No, no, you're not. You are literally helping people do what they're already doing. Well, the answer was no. So you're not really selling. And I agree. I was, that's what I was going to say. I'm like, dude, if I was talking to a brand new person in real estate, I'd be like, dude, calm down. This ain't difficult, right? right? You need to know your inventory, what's available. Then you need to meet a customer. That's the important part. Get that attention, meet that hand, shake that hand and know your inventory. Because, because if I take you to a house and you don't like it and your wife don't like it and you buy it anyway, I sold you the house. If I show you a house nine times out of 10, people are like, I like it. Let's make an offer. Okay, so now what do I need you for? Well, what offer should I make? Well, shit's going for about 3% off a list or, hey, dude, you better freaking offer all in cash one time or you're going to lose this deal. Okay, good. Then let's offer one time in cash. So you're not selling me on anything. You're informing me. You're guiding me. You're helping me. You're assisting me. You're not selling me. So real estate agents, they don't sell real estate. No. They find, they find real estate. Exactly. I, I wouldn't more... even say that. Like Zillow literally, like you said, took that off of our plate now. We literally are just- No, 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 dude. Zillow is a tool. Right. Like, like you're still finding real estate, dude. You're just using Zillow to do it. They didn't take it off your plate. I'm not looking for Zillow, bro. I'm calling you. And yeah. I'll bet you anything, the more successful you go up the ladder financially, the more that's true. People, I'm not I'm not going to Zillow, dude. I got shit to do. I'm calling my boy and my boy can use Zillow. No, I understand. But, you know. Ricky, they, 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 I'm looking, <laughs> hey, I'm looking for a spot in Nashville, about a $5 million budget. You know, dude, uh, a little bit outside of town, hopefully Franklin. Uh uh, what's the other one called? Um, I forget, but hey, good neighborhood only. Get back to me. I'm look, not going on Zillow. Listen, no, listen. When, you, when, you send me your links, when you send me links and it's on Zillow, because you went to Zillow? No, I would never. Listen, we have MLS, right? We would send links directly from the MLS, right? That's how it operates. And if you are one of the... You're like, a good, hey, hold on, let me say, if you're a good realtor, <laughs> dude, you're selling, you're sending me shit that ain't on fucking MLS yet. Off market, baby. Shit. Come on, no, dude, Come hey, on dude. Ricky! Right now, there's nothing on market or off market. But if you're one of the one out of 10, one out of 15 who 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 wants me to go find a property, hell yeah. I mean, I'm all over it. I'll go find a piece of property. I'm dying to do that again. <laughs> that was how I used to do it back in the day. Hey, so, 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 so back to what Brad was saying, the inventory sells itself. I, I, I agree in the sense that the agent is helping the person get to their goals, but there's no selling involved in terms of the house. If they like the house, they're going to buy it. If they don't, you're going to show them more. So we're on the same page there. I like that. I like that. Because again, I talk to a lot of realtors and they think they're selling people. <laughs> you can't convince someone to buy no. a six hundred thousand dollar house that they don't enjoy. Absolutely. No, like you bring you bring me over to a house, and I'm like, oh my god. My wife's like, oh my god, babe, can you imagine with that yeah. over there, that over there? The kids are playing with the back. <laughs> you know how much is it? You know, yeah. you're not selling me a shit. Right. You're showing me. So yeah. if, so so. Our I job, our job, Brad, really lies. Pictures with on your cards too. Can you guys stop that shit? <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I don't need to see your face. And, and, and a lot of them, especially. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the, our job really lies within the transaction, right? From the yeah, point of they say they love cards. this house to the point of getting it closed, right? Ricky, you rolled right past the card in the photo. You guys have photos on the cards? <laughs> oh, you asking? I, Man, I, I, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't does. carry cards around, bro. I'm scared. <laughs> Do realtors put their pictures on their cards? Yeah, not just on their cards. They, they put them on their signs. So what do you think mm -hmm. about that? Personally, if you're, if you're gorgeous, <laughs> okay, or you look like a freaking stud, yes, use your picture. 
What's if there the ain't deal? nothing special about you, you look kind of homely. You're losing your hair. Like, you know, you dress like shit, like your, your clothes are cheap. You know, I wouldn't put your picture on the damn card personally. Why? It's not helping you. Nobody's going, oh, my God, I wasn't going to call him. But look at that freaking receding hairline <laughs> and that freaking polyester suit. I got to call this guy. So just name, nobody's, phone, nobody's number, email. Shit. Nobody's doing that shit. So okay? just name, phone, or number, email. That's all you want. Dude, if I was in real estate, I'd give you a freaking really kick. I mean, I wouldn't do cards either anymore. I'd do like some sort of technology. But if we were still back in the card days, I would go get an unbelievably gorgeous freaking linen paper. And I'd have a really classy Bradley, your realtor underneath it. Like that's my position. I'm your realtor. Okay, uh -huh. <laughs> Bradley, it would say your realtor. And then it would give them every fucking way to get a hold of me possible. Mm -hmm. And then, and then on the other side, it would say, call 24 seven day or night. I got you, bro. Brad, why aren't you training real estate agents as it is with everything you know? Cause I don't train people. A lot of people mistake me for a trainer. I'm not a trainer. I, I have a CEO. Uh, I'm the CEO of a software company. I'm trying to uh, put this thing in the billion dollar status. Most of my days is, is trying to figure that out. And I don't have time to, to, to build a training business until lately. Now the real events, the series is kind of getting built up for that uh, uh, very purpose. And I think, you know, real estate might be one of the real event series. Matter of fact, what I do, you guys, is I, is basically I draw them in cause it's me. Mm. People, people trust me, dude. Like yeah. I just real success event, right? I had, some of the, I had a couple billionaires there. I had freaking people that have actually done it. And I told them we ain't selling them nothing. I already sold them a ticket. That's what we sold them. Yeah. Okay. But what you are allowed to do is come in here and give them tactical information that when they go out and apply it and they go, Holy crap, they reach out to you, follow you, love you and all that. Yeah. So, yeah. so give them tactical information. And so it was, a, it was a great event. And the real is the brand real wealth, real health, real confidence, real real estate, real selling, real marketing, real marriages, real investment, investing, real, everything's real. So, so the real estate conference wouldn't be me talking about real estate. It would be me hosting you guys coming in to talk about real estate, this person coming in to talk about real estate. So in other words, I'm just kind of the aggregator of, of legitimate people. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Cause there's so many gurus out there that are full of shit, dude. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, and, yeah. and, 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 and I can, I can spot them a mile away. Number one, number two, I've been dealing with a lot uh, for 20 years. So I kind of know who's full of shit and who's not. So at the end of the day, it, this is the way you guys tell if you ever, if you ever looking for a guru or a mentor or a coach or anything, have they accomplished what you're trying to accomplish? And if the answer is no, well, then who gives a shit what they're driving and if they fly in jets? Who cares? Are they doing what you yeah. want to do? And yeah. if the answer is no, well, then don't hire them. Now, yeah, there you go. If the, if the answer is yes, well, then hire them and listen and apply what they're teaching you. And even if someone else says they suck, dude, figure that out for yourself. Judge for yourself. Apply what they're teaching you and move along. And guess what? Pretty soon you'll be the guru. Why? Because you've had 20 years of experience and you've been coached and you've learned and you've grown over 20 years. And then people are like, you're the guru. Mm -hmm. And by I'm the way, I'm 20 years learning. in, right? I'm 20 years in, closed 100 deals a year since 2014, wrote two books, coached tens of thousand agents for free. I'm the first completely free real estate coach. And the reason why I did it was because of exactly what you're saying, man. All the jack leg people that have been, number one, there's so many coaches out there that never even sold real estate. There's so many out there that, that sold for two years, closed 19 properties and selling courses for 500 bucks. Um, and these new agents are getting, are, they're so impressionable in the first month, two, three months. Um, and that, that, going back to your question, that's one of the reasons why there's a lot of failure too is the bad training, man, with this 1980s high pressure, Carl Selzy type, uh, uh, strategies that they teach new agents. Uh, that's mainstream. And, uh, I've been trying well, to break through that for, for a couple years. Well, again, 
whoever's listening to this, that's what I'm talking about. You want to sell a hundred houses a year. Well, if he's done it since 14, ask Ricky how he's done it. Cause, cause, and then by the way, don't just ask him, hear what he says and then go apply it consistently and continue to be in communication. Cause guess what? Maybe you misinterpreted what he said and then you went and applied it. So that doesn't work. Well, you didn't do it right. Dipshit. Like stay in communication with the expert. Right. Yeah. And, and then apply what he's saying or she's saying, and then, and then see what happens and then give feedback and, and, you know, continue that relationship. And all of a sudden, six months later, a year later, you've given it a legitimate attempt and, and you find out, dude, this person doesn't know his ass from the hole in the ground. Well then dude, don't cry. Cause you just wasted six months, dude. You yeah. took action where other people aren't. Right. So just take action Listen, pay attention, try things out, think for yourself for Pete's sake. Like, dude, if I'm getting into real estate, I'm calling you. I'm going to say, hey, Ricky, dude, tell me, I'm just getting into it, dude. How do I start, you know, making money? You know, if you say, Brad, you got to freaking, you know, get personalized cards and send them to everybody in your family. I'm not going to go, oh, that's stupid. (laughs) I'm going to say, is that what you did? And you're going to go, that's what I did. And I'm going to go, I might say, you think it still works? Like that was 2014 and you'd go, well, I don't know if it still works, dude, because I don't do it anymore. I'm rich now, but that's how I started. I'd go excellent and I'd do it. And then I'd come back and, 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 and we can go, it don't work no more, Ricky. What else? Mm-hmm. Because I'd try it. Too many people don't try stuff, dude. Yeah. Listen, I, I send people through sales and closing training, closing training. I can teach anybody how to get past an objection when it's possible to do so. In, in other words, the, every deal is not a deal. Every deal is not closable. So people don't understand that. They talk to 10 customers and they only close three and they say, or let, let's make it simple. They talk to 10 customers, they only close two and they say, I've got a 20% closing ratio. Well, if you dissected those 10 customers, I'll bet you as an example, four of them There wasn't a deal there at all for anybody. No closer on earth because it's not a deal, which means you actually closed two out of six. See what I'm saying? Right. Because the other four are going to do a deal later. Well, the the point being, dude, is every deal is not closable. Right. So you go show me a shit house and and I don't buy it. And you're like, I couldn't close it. It wasn't closable. What if you what if you made the object of the objective of the entire situation built on what you said to just build a, a friendship with them, though? What if that's the actual result well, that you're after? Well, a friendship might lead to a conversation and a conversation might lead to some information and an informa- and some information might allow me to figure out a way to make a deal when, when otherwise it wouldn't have been possible. So like, for example, if you guys are my buddies, I know you're not looking for a little shit three bedroom track home, you know, but I found one and I want you to buy it. So I call you up and I say, Ricky, let me ask you a question, dude. If I could show you how to make freaking double your money in the next six months, would you be interested yeah. Okay, good. Well, check this out. I got this little shit track home over here. I could probably steal it for 280, put 40 in it and sell it for 600 because the market's blowing up. Are you interested? Oh, I'd buy that in a heartbeat. Boom. I sold you, <laughs> I I just sold a, you a house. I just sold you a house. Yeah. So, so how do I have that relationship with you? That's the question. If I didn't yeah. have the relationship with you, I wouldn't be calling you to do that. And I wouldn't have sold that house. You know why? Because I'm looking for someone that wants a mansion and I'm going to show them a fucking track home. Dude, you're not going to sell that track home. Unless, of course, you adapt, shift, and now make it an investment opportunity. And how are you going to do that if you don't know the people? How are you going to do that if you're not prepared? And by the way, you said comp- confidence earlier. Dude, confidence is a big thing. And, and, and a lot of people don't have it. And you're 100% right. I show people how to build confidence. Now, when someone says, but earlier you said only listen to people that are doing what you want. Well, again, do you think I'm confident or no? Absolutely. Okay, well, then I built my confidence. I can show people how to build confidence. Number one, you forgive yourself for all the past bullshit. Then you commit to do what you say you're going to do, period. End of story. Then you freaking rack up the wins by lowering your goals and quit making these stupid ass big goals you always fail at 
and start making realistic goals that you win at. So you can start racking up the wins and mentally you start feeling like a winner. Then you start standing up a little straighter and think you deserve a little more, which you do. And then step four comes along. Weed out the idiots. They'll reveal themselves with all their shit talking. Okay. Then step five, visualize, visualize exactly where you want to go and visualize you being there every single day. You don't think visualization works. You better ask a whole bunch of researchers because they've proved it does. Then step six, get new information. If you want to change what you're getting, change what you're doing. Make sense? If you want to change what you're doing, you have to change what you believe because the reason you do what you do and, 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 and the reason you do what you do is because you believe what you believe for whatever reason. The actions you take are based on the beliefs you possess. So the only way to change your actions are to change your beliefs. So how do you change beliefs? You can flip flip with a switch, right? Nope, that, nope, that is not true. No? You know, nope. Reprogram your subconscious. Nope. You guys, it's so simple, people overlook it. Like just take away all the complexity of it. If you want to change your belief, what do you think you, gotta, you have to do? Make read podcast, yeah, uh, absorb you content, get, you be around get, other people. You need to get new information. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's step six. Get new information, people. Follow those six steps for 90 days. I guarantee you'll be 10 times more confident. And guess what, dude? You got to be prepared because people will talk shit. Oh, Ricky, you, you know, you've become mighty arrogant. You know, why? Well, because they're low level thinking dipshits in the first place that shouldn't even be around you. They're not supporting you. They're telling you that you're a dick. Well, fuck you. How about that? Well, I'm a dick because I think I can do better. I'm a dick because I think I deserve more. I'm a dick because I want to develop something out of life. Fuck you. How about you're a dick? Beat it. And then you fucking chop those bastards out of your life. And guess what happens? 90 days later, you're just hanging around very few people. And then the next thing you know, you start getting so much more money. And then the next thing you know, your freaking shit starts to elevate. Next thing you know, your friends start to change. Next thing you know, dude, you have good friends and a good life. And everybody's like, damn, dude, how do you do it? You go, man, you just got to get rid of the dipshits. And they're like, yeah, but that's my high school buddy. We've known each other. That shit doesn't work. 20 years later, they're freaking Joe blows all miserable, big belly drinking beer freaking hoping to go fishing once a fucking month scraping to pay bills come on man that ain't, it, that ain't it, it, go. brad i, I want to thank you i'm gonna take the last three minutes call well, it a me. 90 day confidence builder with brad lee me and ricky are gonna make seven figures off it so we'll, we'll, we'll send you some royalties for that one send me some royalties, <laughs> man that's it brad thank you yeah, so yeah, much yeah. For, for coming on today how, how can people find you just google me you have an instagram as well yeah, at the real Brad Lee. And by the way, that's L E A, which is not Leah. People say, is that Leah? I say, I don't know. Do you drink Tia? <laughs> <laughs> cool, man. Hey, thanks for coming on, bro. Dude. Enjoy the conversation. We'll bring you back when uh, when Zillow takes over and we can have another chat. <laughs>